Guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to film a, another video as a follow-on to our series on cavity back versus blade irons yep. and sort of the the decisions between which do you choose and which would help your game the most and what you're looking at from a characteristic standpoint and, and ball flight changes between the two. And talking about the common misconceptions about how they're designed and mm -hmm. what do they do in a real person's ball flight. Uh, we kind of got into it a little bit mm -hmm. with the last video and the feedback was really good. Yep. Um, the only thing I guess we didn't accomplish is we didn't compare a blade to like a huge iron, like a big yeah. fat cavity back iron. We kind of went, we went um, Mura blade to Strixon Z565, which, which is, I mean, it's not, it's not a big iron, is it? I mean, no. you said that when you looked down at it on the day, you went, I, I could play that. It's a very nice looking yeah, club. Yeah, it's a good looking club. And you categorize it as kind of like a, a mid-size mid -size cavity back. At the most. Yeah. You know, in today's iron, that we're going to going to actually change it up and go more towards the, I mean, this wouldn't be quite in the super game improvement category. This on the be, borderline? It would be borderline, but certainly game improvement is what you'd be looking at with G400. G400, okay. Yeah, okay, so wider body. Um, definitely a change in CG location based on that on that wider body. Right. Okay. So, um, you know, if for the viewers who watched their video when we looked at hybrid versus five wood, mm. and they look at the difference, why does five wood go higher than a hybrid? Face depth plays a part. So face CG depth. location, lower CG on a five wood relative to hybrid. The taller the face, the higher the CG. Yes. Okay. The wider the body, the further back the CG is. So mm -hmm. five wood has a wider body than a hybrid, mm -hmm. so the, the CG comes back. So it launches, therefore, the CG is lower, further back. We all know that launch is higher. And exactly what happened That's in our exactly test. exactly what happened. Yeah. So I think what we're going right. to try and see if we can find out today is if the loft is exactly the same on the irons, which, which we is. have got them 31 on both. Yep. Um, now, we've got, a, I should say, this little kind of uh, notes here. We've got Mura 6 iron yep. and G400 7 iron. So this is a 7 iron in my hand. It was the only way we could get lofts to match. Exactly. Okay, so once we've got that uh, sort of matched up, the lie angle is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. um, same shaft? Same shaft. We're going to use your shaft, the yep. Dynamic Gold X7 at standard length, 37 and a half. Uh, every, keep everything very, very standard. We are literally measuring the difference between a wide-bodied iron and a, a narrow, narrow-bodied iron. We're taking out every single variable other than just the every design other of the head. one. Yeah. So we're looking at, you know, how does how does the face flex work on G400 mm -hmm. as it's designed to propel the ball higher? Yes. Does that work? Mura does not have that characteristic. No. It does not have as thin a face. It does not have the same technology in the back of it. So we're kind of expecting to see a bit of a difference between the two flights. Last sure. time, we never, did we? Yeah, so that, and I think it's funny, when we did that test, I thought, oh, is this going well? Because the two are so similar, yeah, yeah. right? And, um, you know, the point of it wasn't to, to prove anyone's mm -hmm. biases. We just wanted to show everyone this is what happened, and that is what happened. Yeah. And uh, it was interesting in and of itself, and, and a lot of good comments came back saying, mm -hmm. oh, that's interesting that you mm -hmm. did get similar results. Right. Um, but I think we know why that occurred, because yeah. as you said, the CG locations of those two irons are closer. They weren't enough of a difference. Right. So I think, you know, what we're going to try and see today is we're testing design characteristics mm. of, of one versus the other. Yeah. Um, we're making a much, much um, bigger sort of differential between one iron and the next in terms of the design. And, and let's see if it is literally just loft versus loft, because I think that's a lot of the the, the kind of the thoughts out there. They, you know, these modern irons only go further because of the yes. loft. That's the number one that's thing it. that everyone hears. Yep. Um, and of course, the loft is a huge determinant. Of but course. what we've always said, uh, what you've always said, mm -hmm. I should say, is that the reason that they can make this loft stronger mm -hmm. is because the head design yeah. launches the ball higher mm -hmm. with more spin or, or whatever they're doing to yep. allow for that stronger loft. So exactly. you take that away. Yep. And of course, these two head designs should mm -hmm. produce different ball flights with exactly. the same loft. That, that's exactly it. So we're going to put that to the test yep. with um, our very own Iron Byron. Um, is as close as we can get to one. So uh, we'll test that and, and hopefully, I mean, I think the comments in the last video were so good and so For positive. Sure. I think so many people who had been of the mindset that, you know, they thought they hit blades really consistently, yes. more consistently in cavities, were kind of vindicated a little bit Absolutely. in the video by seeing that your test really proved that. I think today we'll show something else. It is going to be a different result. And, and I should just quickly, to, to go back to what you said, your whole um, explanation of turf interaction, yeah. 
I read more um, positive comments about that sort light. of light bulb mm -hmm. than anything that we've done in a while. Mm -hmm. I think that was really good, and it was a nice little nugget from that video because, yeah. yes, the data we showed was similar, but yeah. your explanation of that, a ton of people said, oh, yeah, that's, I do hit my mm -hmm. blades a little nicer, and, and they had that moment of turf interaction. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, a really, it's a real forgotten design characteristic yeah. and something that really isn't factored into the forgiveness. You know, you know where, where ball speed can be. Ultimately, forgiveness is where can ball speed be lost? Mm. Can it be lost from a miss hit? Can it be lost by m too much time spent in the dirt and not enough time out the dirt? That's how I categorize forgiveness, the ability to retain ball speed and launch conditions. And that's really interesting. That's what it is. Because forgiveness to everyone else is how big is the club? Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, and how much sure. of a miss hit can I get away with? Yeah. But you've added another dimension to it, which enlightened a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I, I was really happy with that test. And as you say, this is going to have different data and different talking points because yeah. they're different comparisons. And, and we hopefully, we, you know, we should see another dimension to the loft versus loft argument. Mm. So, Absolutely. Um, That's okay. the thing. We, we definitely are going to say, in case you missed it before, they're the same loft mm -hmm. and everything is going to be head design based. And, and I think maybe one last note to this is, uh, this is a series, isn't it? We're, yes. not, like, we're not even stopping here with this testing. No. We're going to keep this going and, and try and see if maybe, okay, so what's mid-size versus game improvement? What's yep. mid-size versus super game improvement? I mean, we could potentially run through that PXG line yep. with that new super game improvement, the extreme massive soul. wide sole. Yep you know, versus the T head. Let's, let's do that from within the same company. That's a great idea. Potentially we could do something like that. Coming up with video ideas while we shoot a video here. This is how we roll. <laughs> so should we do this? Let's do it. What okay. should we do first? Excellent, let's, um, let's go, let's give you a little break. Let's go the cavity back first. So nice of you. So nice. Let's do it. All right, Matty, um, we've got the Dynamic Gold X7 standard length, your shaft, you own that now. It's not Jason Day's shaft. We've got the Ping G400, so let's start with that. I mean, See what we'll, happens. We'll try and gather f usual kind of five shots Kay. as a sample size. Sounds good. Be ideal. You strike. It's a good hit. Very good. It's really low. I think it's going too low. I need to warn low flying planes about your ball <laughs> flight if you keep hitting them like that. Okay, so that was a good strike. That was a good. We'll strike. save that one. Mm-hmm. Most of that one, that's going to go a long Yeah, a little way. on the toe, but I honestly uh, would be okay with that strike as well. Interesting toe strike. Went a little further. Look at that. So we probably lost a little bit of spin, maybe. Well, a little shut face, I think, eh? Yeah, it was, for shut sure. face. Yeah, a little less dynamic loft, so the spin's going to come down off the less dynamic loft. Okay. Similar strike, mm -hmm. obviously better face angle. That was a good one. Yep, that felt good. Nice flight. Carrying about your usual 195-ish. Yeah, just kind of just shy of that flag and yeah. running up. It's funny, that looked a bit low on the yeah, reading. Did it feel it? Slightly? Slightly. But um, feedback-wise, obviously less than a blade. I mean, yeah. I didn't feel the, the vibration, I guess, mm -hmm. to the same degree. One more? Let's do one more for luck. Pounded that one. It's probably the best of the lot. Let's see the height of that. It's got to go in. <laughs> we still haven't jarred one on this YouTube channel. It's kind of sad the number of shots I've hit. One should go in. Okay, um, good, really good. good. All right, let's switch over to the Mura. Okay, little switch over, um, little change. So we've got the Mura six iron. Um, it was interesting. Some good. I mean, you certainly felt you hit those yeah. five well. Uh, certainly high ball flight. We, we none of them I'd be upset that. with. They were all good. Decent strikes. Yeah. Some towards the toe, and I, I would definitely comment that they let me get away with it. Okay. They weren't outrageously hooked or anything like that. So. Very interesting. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see five more with the Mura, Matt. <clears throat> That's a 
Pretty good strike. I like that one. May have just closed the face a hair. No, pretty good. Okay. Thin? No, toey. Toe jammer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Quite a bit on the toe. It will be really interesting to measure the second shot with this one and the one you hit the extreme toe with the, yeah, the ping. I think it was my second with that one too. Measure the exact strike location, so that being one millimeter low, 20 millimeters toe. Look at the ball flight characteristics of that one versus the characteristics of the ping. Very that interesting. That could be interesting. And I'll tell you feel wise, I felt it much more severe. A lot more deflection. Exactly, so I felt the club more twist torque. more yeah. and I just felt, just felt worse, mm -hmm. I guess would be. Okay. That's a nice flight, Matt. Really nice. Like a, a fraction heavy, but pretty good. Those are the best of the strikes with this one so far. There's a pretty good reason we put you into these irons, wasn't there? Yeah. <laughs> Well, as you say, they, like with a good swing, there's never any surprises with them. You look up and they fly basically the distance that you expect them to. Yeah. Good swing. Okay. So that to me is five fair shots against five fair shots. Okay, Matt, great job as always. Um, pretty good swings. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we got ten, five and five, good sample size. We eliminated two of the Muras. You did a couple of re-hits because my feedback to you was those weren't comparable to yeah. the, all the swings I made with the yeah. G400. So right. what I wanted to do was make sure we got five that I would categorize as good or very mm -hmm. good with both mm -hmm. clubs. Yeah, exactly. Comparable shots. So we're not really factoring in things like low strike creating downward deflection. Yeah. We're really taking in. I just don't want to introduce more head. variables. So we took five, yeah. you know, we took five really good shots with each. Well, let's, let's kind of throw them uh, side by side here and see what we've got. So. First and foremost, let's look at strike points. So you were okay. fractionally more to the toe, fractionally higher with the interesting. Mura. Yeah. Um, this is interesting to me because we know that this is the same loft of club. We, we mm -hmm. measured it the same. So dynamic loft yeah. is lower. Dynamic loft is quite significantly uh, lower. With the blade. Mm -hmm. The dynamic lie is, is uh, less toe down interesting. with the blade. Do you recall a few weeks back, we had a conversation about a test that Andrew Rice and I done uh, down in Savannah when we, took, we actually measured this exact same thing. We took a blade and we took a cavity back, big cavity back, it was a mm -hmm. big Bertha at the time. And what we actually found was cavity backs create more droop than you blades. You did mention this very Remember briefly, that? yeah. And once I actually saw you hitting a few there, I started to get a bit excited because I, I could see it appearing oh, okay. again. Yeah. So when we look at a 2.2 degree That's differential, a it's a lot, yeah. so it's, it's definitely a lot. So we're talking about the face control and where the face is going to tilt and, and therefore point. So in case people aren't familiar, you're talking about the shaft droop. Yeah, so we're exactly. So we're talking about, you know, with, with the blade, the, 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 the club head comes in a little bit more kind of square, neutral, mm -hmm. and then the cavity back tends to droop so down more than a blade. Is that occurring in the shaft deflection or is that occurring? It's, cur it's, it's I mean, it can only really, because the shaft stays as a constant, okay. the only variable being the head, right. the variable being the design, being that there's more weight in the toe section through the, okay. the, the, the perimeter weighting. So, right. you know, if we look at the design yeah. features. Can hold that for you. Yeah. Huh? So we've kind of got, you know, a little bit more um, sort of mass located down there. Hmm. You know, when Andrew and I saw that at the time, I remember we, we kind of were, we were scratching our head a little bit of that one because neither of us had ever seen that like, cavity backs create more droop than blades. It's totally, I mean, I know you mentioned it briefly, mm -hmm. but to hear you actually go through it, that's crazy. Yeah. That's even the case. It's, it's, it really is different. So, mm. um, I mean, even we're, we're seeing dynamics 
are not the same with a cavity back versus a blade. No. So how we can ever really, you know, yeah. sort of almost compare them is, is interesting. Well, it's important to say that there's, we wanted to find uh, design differences and head differences that don't have anything to do with the loft. Yeah, and yeah. you just found one. So that's one of the things that people should look at. I mean, the golf club in motion will always, will always mm. do something different. We, we're doing what we can to control the variables here. Yes. We're, do, we're, you know, we're making the loft the same, the shaft length, everything's the same. It's, you know, we're using the exact same shaft and grip. Yeah. But once, once you know, the, all these moving parts are in motion, things, things can change. Totally. Okay, so the dynamics change. So that's, that's a little bit on the delivery. Hmm. Um, Sorry, before you go back, yeah. I, the uh, delivery numbers, uh -huh. yep. I was a little bit um, steeper with the blades, it looks like, by degree. You were steeper by one degree. Is that mm -hmm. enough to be significant, you think? Because it's not a lot, obviously, one degree angle of attack mm -hmm. on a six iron. Is, that, is there any way that that's not just my personal? I mean, it looks really consistent. It's I really was above consistent. four with, with, maybe just mentally I... I swung a little bit more shallow with the with the bigger headed club with because you saw some more mass. Maybe, yeah. I mean, just again, things that just are so hard to hard to kind of you know really see whether that's your internal instincts kicking. But in. it's interesting because that's very consistently very different. Interesting. Uh, let's go over to this. I think this is quite a revealing page here. Look at the height difference. So the biggest thing was hmm. the the kind of whatever that is one and a half degrees of loft mm -hmm. a, lo a launch angle change couple of hundred RPMs, that equated in, in kind of actual numbers to another additional 12 feet. Yeah, so more height and more, and more mm -hmm. ball speed, we should also say, came off the G400. Yep. Um, where do you think, this is an interesting question because I think I swung a bit slower. If you mm -hmm. look at the club data. Yeah, 102 versus 104. Yeah, so let's, let's just show everyone that. Mm -hmm. um, On the club, yep, perfect. So I was swinging slightly slower with mm -hmm. the G400, yep. but the output was more ball speed. Mm -hmm. So that right away to me is a humongous difference between those two things. Mm -hmm. That's huge because a blade with more input mm -hmm. gave you less ball speed. I would, I would throw a little, uh, a little interesting take on that one. Um, I would say that you probably didn't swing them as far apart as that shows. Okay. The measurement, of the way the way measured the quad has measured those two heads oh, is right. fractionally different. So just so people know that yeah. the width of the head based on where the club the, the is measuring. The head shape, well, it's probably picked up at a slightly different right. point. So even if we say they're close, close. it's still more ball speed yeah. though. In, in yeah. any case a it did produce. Ball, yeah. yeah, that's where I get focused on over, over like so it's almost so two the club degrees head speed, more yeah. ball speed. Gotcha. Uh, so we're seeing more ball speed, more launch angle, more backspin. Hmm. G400 is designed to do all those things. Yeah, and it landed at exactly the same yardage, yeah. but they got there two different two ways. Two different ways, yep. So, I mean, it's, it's, you know, that face is designed to flex. That was one thing Ping could have got in the slightly stronger loft game mm. uh, with G400. So um, they designed that head to flex more, to create more launch and all these things that we're seeing. Right. So really to create more launch without more spin. Yes. That's, that's kind of what they tried to do. Now we saw a fraction more spin. But probably not enough to be I mean, I could hit 10 more shots and maybe that spin number would be closer to the six iron of the mirror. It could be almost the same. We saw a lower strike. Ah. So we could be looking at a bit of gear effect, I mean, right. a, bit, a little bit of extra tilt. So we obviously, gotcha. you know, the, the low strike guys obviously creates a little more tilt down of the head. It, you know, mm -hmm. The ball will sort of spin a little bit more uh, off of that. So, um, but I think the objective of trying to see does a wider bodied iron um, with those characteristics does that fly higher than a, a blade, a pure blade? Clearly does. It does. It definitely yeah. does. So, you know, if you're someone out there who mm. is struggling to create launch, elevation, mm -hmm. stopping power through spin and velocity, yep. go to a head design like a G400 or something. You know, go to mm. a place where you can get fitted with and go, okay, for your set of circumstances, you need these characteristics that the, the head produces. And, mm -hmm. you know, we certainly wouldn't be you know, no offense to tell me to be certain we wouldn't be going to a P790. Yeah. I just had to happen to have that and then it caught my eye, but like I'm not going there if I need more sort of elevation and stopping power. Yeah, because as you say, those are a low spin iron. Very low spin yeah. iron. You know, they, they're a great iron and if you've got a little bit of excess spin, which a lot of our customers have done when they've come in here, we've sold so many sets of those, you're just not going to that iron if you, you see those circumstances. Gotcha. You would be, you'd be hitting that thing 
you're hitting you rockets know. with that. Yeah, you'd be hitting another, probably another 10 yards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's interesting. So the way to connect this for me to, um, back to the loft thing. So we've gone yeah. the same loft. Mm -hmm. The reason, again, that these companies have chosen you know, to give people more distance using that head design. The reason they're able to mm -hmm. is because their iron head does launch it higher yeah. and it does spin it a little bit more. It, let's say not always, mm -hmm. but this head design in particular should give someone a little more elevation. A little bit more elevation depth. And so that way they drop the loft a little bit mm -hmm. because this is a seven iron. Yeah. So they, they had a full club to play with. And this is the argument that everyone always makes is, mm -hmm. oh, your clubs are just a, a, degree, or a club strong. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they are, but they've designed the head to allow you to get the same ball flight, yeah. and in fact, a higher ball flight than mm -hmm. a, a normal six iron. Yeah. That's, that's, I guess, the summary that I'm trying to make? Yeah, there's an, it's an engineered ball flight. Gotcha. Right, so by design characteristics and features, and there's only so much you can push it, but you can, you know, you can definitely see from that test. They've pushed it, yeah. There's, there's changes that, have, that are made from, from you know, previous models and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, so. Um, they were able to get ball speeds up, which I mean, that's a very quick iron. Mm -hmm. Obviously we saw that there. Yep. Uh, that would keep up with any game improvement iron really. Um, but in terms of getting a little extra elevation, um, you know, going back to, come back to Andrew Rice, you know, I was talking about earlier, Andrew's a ping staff guy and Andrew, he is a self-proclaimed handle dragger. Okay. So he'll kind of always kind of be a little bit on the D loft inside of things, gets the head, gets the club face a little bit shut yep. and, and will tend to kind of drag the handle a little bit in D loft. It's quite shallow. So mm -hmm. he's always kind of, you know, asking, you know, what, you know, what can I do to create height and sort of that sort of thing. I know what he, when he got his G400s, he just found that he was able to get so much more elevation from the head design. You know, he uses a sort of light to weight steel to kind of help kick that up right. the marginal amount that it does but a lot of it's from head design. That's a really interesting little kind of um, tidbit. Mm -hmm. and, and does he blend his set in the, long, in the shorter irons? He yep. just uses them. He's, and that's, a, he's a G400 guy. He's a good player, and Very he uses player. a, a big game, uh, game improvement iron. Yep. So that's a good example of mm -hmm. don't get stuck with, this is my handicap, yeah. I gotta play blades, and the opposite. Definitely. I'm a 20 handicap, you know, I can't play a small cavity, mm. maybe you can't. Yeah. You don't want to let your ego get in the way of that stuff. It's uh, In either direction. Yeah, like exactly. Don't be so self-deprecating that you won't even try. You know what I mean? Don't even Thousand try percent. a smaller iron. Exactly. Um, that's don't, a really yeah, good don't, story. Don't yeah. but feel like you have to be in one direction because of what you see. Um, so I hope we did this well. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, think I, we did it well. Uh, it's, I think it's, it's, it's another take on cavity back versus yeah. blade. It's, it's, it's another way of maybe looking at the argument and we'll, we'll keep We'll keep introducing other ways to, yep. to show you guys the differences between different irons and help you in your selection process. And do you know one of the things I've loved the most when I read the, read the comments uh, and get the emails actually that we get daily. So many of you are, are emailing in and saying, listen, I'm too far away. I'd love to come and work with you guys, mm. but you're too far away. But what you really helped me with was the education and knowledge that when I went into my fit, I was able to ask better questions. Yeah. Like that to me is like, that's the vision. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Like it's not, you know, we, we know, you know, we'll service the, the Toronto area and slightly outside we've had a lot of guys flying into work. Which is great. Us, which is great, but that's not going to be the core business. You know, the, or it is the core business, but it's not going to be the macro effect. Of course, yeah. The macro effect for us is going to be about raising awareness and being, you know, helpful and educational to you guys so that you're using the right equipment so people believe in club fitting more, mm -hmm. see the true benefits of it. And that for me is, you know, maybe a little flurry, but that's that's the way I feel about the whole thing. No, that's, I think what you've just described is what I always hoped yeah. we could achieve with this channel. Mm -hmm. um, and videos like this, I think are good because we presented the data. Even if someone just tuned in for five minutes, mm -hmm. took a look at those two iron comparisons, they got kind of what they need to get out of that uh, little story. And then when they so, go to their fitting, they'll know that yeah. iron will go a little that, bit higher that, and spend an a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. very cool. Good. Guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. We love doing it. Um, leave your comments as always below. We love, uh, we love reading them and interacting. It's, yep. it's really what fuels us with the channel. We, we think that's the, the best thing about it. Mm -hmm. So um, keep watching. We'll keep making great videos and we'll see you soon.